Hello folks, welcome to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks here on YouTube and um, I want to just first by saying thank you to any and all subscribers who come to this channel and check out the videos here that I post occasionally. I'm not a hardcore, um, you know, YouTuber per se on this. I mean, obviously I, I stick by behind you guys. I mean, I'm all the way. I'm like, I'm for the drivers, not the companies. The companies are horrible. And there's some great channels that are out there. Pedro DoorDash Santiago, Rideshare Professor, Hannibal is Hungry, um, you know, Mike, Mike the Driver. But see, and, and I'm not critiquing, I mean, Rideshare Professor will tell you exactly how it is. Although, you know, I mean, obviously we all have our, our opinions, our quirks, what we like, what we dislike, whatever. And Pedro does his thing a different way. But here's the thing, you know, folks. I don't put any mustard, ketchup, or mayonnaise, or whipped cream, or cherries, or anything on top to make everything sound great. The bottom line is, folks, you, I mean, I blame, I blame drivers, and I blame the company. I blame the company mostly, and, what, and I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. The company, what these companies do, folks, is they come in when they first start up. And they offer these unbelievable things that just blow your mind. Like you can't even believe you're making the money you're making. What they they what did they start out? DoorDash started out with seven dollars base pay. So anything over seven bucks, no matter where you were going, you, you're making a killing, right? Because if you're making, if it's a, even a five dollar order or a six dollar order with a seven dollar base pay, that's twelve dollars every time, right? But what did they do over the course of the years? They reduced it down to five, then down, or probably six to five, then to four, then to three, and now in most markets it's two twenty-five. And rideshare is no no better. Uber sucks really bad. That fifty-five cents and forty-five cents they can stick right up their ass. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. And I'm sure, and I please comment in this video because I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna comment the you know appropriately. But the thing is, folks, is that if you're a YouTuber and you're making money doing YouTube and you have a channel, you know, for monetary gain, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't have my channel monetized, folks, and I'll probably never go in the algorithms because of all the YouTube censorship and everything. I'm not out here to play games. I'm not out here to, like, have fun. And uh, it, it, this is all about being concerned and upset about what has gone on. Now, Pedro DoorDash Santiago has made a few videos in the past week or two that address certain things saying, well, this, these jobs may not be, I'm, I suppose he's probably listened to a couple of my videos. And if you have, man, I love you, man. You're a great guy and you have, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not correct about everything. And the thing is, is that, and I love the guy. I mean, I hope he continues to do what he does. He's mostly a, you know, watch what I do during my shift type of guy. And he gives you tips and tricks and it's great, but it's not great. It's great in his market. But how about my market? My market completely sucks. All the all of my fares that come through, all my delivery, you know, that comes through, it'll say it'll be always more money, more uh, miles than money, and they they want you to take these dollar per dollar miles, right? And then when you do the math on it, and you know where you're going strategically, you're out in the East Bumfuck. Pardon my French. That's bottom line. You're just way far out. Too far to take any other orders. So even if you took a $10 for 10 miles, when you get out to the 10 miles, you're in the middle of nowhere. you got to drive all the way back. So you, you can't do that. So then they have these ones that are like 6.8 6 miles for five seventy five. What I mean, that's less money than miles. You have to have more money than miles, folks. We need to get 2 to two fifty to $3 orders, especially with the gas prices as bad as they are, okay? Now, DoorDash Santiago also said, well, this, this gig market thing, this gig economy may not be for you, right? Any person can drive a car. Anyone can go anywhere and do anything. It's, but here's the thing. Are you surviving? Are you paying your bills? I mean, two years ago, the, the economy was, it's not even that the economy was better. The, it, it was better situations. When I drive for Uber, I don't get any tips from anyone. My car looks like 
super clean. I wash it every day. I dress appropriately. I talk very nice to the customers. Hi, how are you? How's your day going? Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, you know when to, when you have to shut up and not talk, you know, so you have quiet customers. So you do appropriate things at the time when you're driving people, but these customers don't want to give any tips with DoorDash. You can figure out if you've gotten a tip and how much you've got by knowing what the base pay is, knowing how far it's going and knowing what you're going to get. Right. So it is, he did say in one of his videos that, you know, we can control our own situation. Oh yeah, you can control it. But look at my screen here. I have this screen up for a reason. I'm a five-star driver. I've been a five-star for a while. I got, I got a bad rating from some dickhead that gave me a bad rating. And then it took me a while to get back up, right? But my acceptance rate is 29%. That means that 71% of my, 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 fares and probably even more than that are terrible so i don't i'm i'm declining more than i'm taking it's it's unbelievable now you might say well you should just get out of it well i don't have a choice at the moment folks i'm in a situation that i have to do these apps for now i have to rotate them and do the best i can but yeah i'm out here to bitch and complain all of you should be out here bitching and complaining are you making exorbitant? Are you making great money? If you're not making three hundred to four hundred dollars per shift, then you ain't making good money. Let, let let's just say the bottom line. That's what you need to make good money in this economy. I'm sorry, and most of you are probably making seventy, sixty, maybe a hundred dollars a shift after you've paid gas, taxes, everything else, whatever you want to call it. So let's call a spade a spade. None of you, almost, I'd say 85% of you are not making good money because we wouldn't be out here on these channels watching these videos. None of us would. Listen, <laughs> if, you are, if you were making such great money doing DoorDash, then you wouldn't have to do any sponsorships with companies. You wouldn't have to make side money selling t-shirts and doing all this stuff. And I'm not knocking any of that stuff. I think it's great and I think, us as drivers, if you're watching channels that you like and they entertain you and they give you some information, you should support them a little bit, right? But those people are well off. Driver Mike, even Rideshare Professor, I mean, he makes a lot of money. But he look, he worked his ass off to get where he's at, so he deserves that. And I'm not knocking him at all. I love the guy. I love you guys. I really do. But I'm just saying, like, I'm in a rock and a hard place myself. I mean, I think most of us make these channels out of frustration to try to uh, induct change into the system, which we never see, right? And I'm telling you now in two days, it's, what is it, Tuesday the 15th today? In two more days, folks, it's the 17th. There's the, uh, the big uh, strike, right, driving strike. Here's how I think it's going to go. Now I'm going to do it. I'm not going to drive and all that, but guess what? It's probably like Hannibal and even DoorDash, Santiago said, was that, you know, people are still going to go out and drive and you're not going to accomplish anything because these, these companies will never change because there's so many people that are so desperate, folks, that they'll do anything. They'll take any, even if it's a dollar going five miles, they'll take it. Like, that's insanity. See, when, you st when it starts hitting you in the wallet, when you have to gas up and you get have to get repairs, like, I blew my tire out the other day. I was, I was actually doing Uber and I shouldn't have even done it. But I made fairly decent money that night because it was a Saturday night. It was raining and snowing, but I hit I hit a curb, blew my tire out because some jerk cut me off. Right, I'm sure that's all happened to us before because I slid on the ice. Anyways, so that's 200. And that whole shift was blown. Now I thank God I had like towing because the towing would have costed me another 200. It would have been a 400 dollar day. Right? Have we had those days before, folks? Yes, we all have, haven't we? And, um, so let me, uh, okay. Hopefully this is still recording. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, you know, folks, these companies don't care about us now. DoorDash at this point, up to this point, I've heard they haven't done anything. They made a statement about how we make 2% on our DoorDash, uh, direct card. If you have one and it's 2% cash back that, that does nothing folks. That only helps you in good times. If you if you have if we have a great economy, gas was two dollars a gallon. Yeah, then you can then you then you make out on it. You're not making out. You're you're in, we're all in the negative, folks. I know. And by the way, I'm not picking on Pedro, but I I saw you know he showed some clips of what he made the past couple of weeks. Yeah, he's making nine hundred, a thousand dollars or more 
driving every week for DoorDash, okay? Do we all make that? No. I mean, it's unbelievable. We're, we're lucky if we make five, 600 at most in most markets. I live in a sub in a suburban area that's surrounding, surrounded by a lot of rich people, which is really sucky because you wouldn't believe some of the houses that I deliver to. These houses would, I mean, would just stun you. They're, they're mansions. Not every house is a mansion, but where I live, it's pretty expensive, okay? And right around me, all these surrounding towns, you wouldn't believe how many rich people do not tip you or they tip you very little. Like you'll go up to a house and you're delivering, say it's 625 and you're only going two miles or even three or even four miles and you drop it off and you come to the house. You just can't believe why didn't that guy give me a few dollars extra? I mean, you could see he has a, a Porsche out in the driveway or two Porsches, <laughs> three car garage. The place is a, is huge. And I mean, I guess that's how these people get rich, huh, folks? The best tippers are people who are working class people who know what it's like. Like when I go out to dinner and stuff or wherever, I always tip the waiter or the waitress 30 to 35 percent. I don't even go with the 15 and 20 percent. OK, if, if you don't have enough money to tip the waiter or waitress who, who served you and they made the food and all that, then you don't deserve to go out. You should be eating, like, like DoorDash pa Pedro Santiago says, start eating bologna sandwiches, right? Why are you ordering from DoorDash? Why are you put, why to put the driver through stress? A lot of these, see, there's so many variables and so many angles, folks, that the customers don't really care. They, they, all they care about is this hot bag of food that's going to come to their door, you know? And let me tell you another side note to this whole situation too folks is that customers have become too decadent too like i want what i want when i want it and you know and whatever and and what i'm saying by that is why are we driving more than five miles anywhere to drop food off because the longer the drive it's like people have gotten um, so used to being able to order food from anywhere they want. See, what DoorDash needs to do is have a five-mile stipend. In other words, will you get the delivery? Uh, well, here's the thing. That's another thing. The, the, these base pays are terrible, folks. They're just terrible. Two twenty-five. Even a local restaurant in your own town that uses their own delivery force that doesn't use DoorDash to deliver like their own in-house delivery drivers they get three fifty four dollars per delivery they charge that to the customer and then they also get another couple of dollars or something that and then plus tips they actually these people who are doing in-house deliveries for companies are making more money than DoorDash I have friends that deliver for pizza for a pizza place called Central Pizza right they have like a 15 drivers driving at all times because that's how busy this place is. They're making like two to th to $400 a shift in eight hours. Not every single time, but a lot of times, 80, 90% of the times. Do we make that on DoorDash? No, it's, it's ridiculous. And by the way, I don't just drive for DoorDash. I do. You might say, well, why don't you just go to another app? I have shipped. I have Instacart. We know Instacart sucks. They're terrible. And I think Pedro was going to be doing Instacart today, by the way. I'm not sure if he was or, or tomorrow. This is a Tuesday at the time I'm recording this. But the shift was so bad for me um, that I had to, like, just end it because all I saw was just order after order. Now, what I did notice that was different that I hadn't noticed in a while was I get I was getting stacked orders. When I would go to pick up an order, they would put one, another one with it. But it was like... They'd add in, you know, $6 going 7.2 miles for stacked. And I'm not going to do that. Like, why? when I watch his videos, he always gets lucky or whatever. He gets ones that are like 0 0.2 miles or 0 0.5 for $12. How come we don't get that in our market? And by the way, Pedro, if you listen to this, man, I really love you. I think you're the greatest guy out here. I mean, you're, you're very kind and nice. And I know you have all of the, you know, you've done 7,000 deliveries and all of that. But, like, you know, I've done about 1,000, well, actually 842. I mean, it's not like I'm some t super veteran, but I've been out here for a while. Now I'm starting to do, I do, I don't do it totally full time, folks. I rotate around. But rideshare, like Lyft and Uber, has been just terrible. 
because they, you're not getting any tips. At least he's right on one thing. When, when you can control the area you're in, if you don't want to go more than five, six miles away, you can stay in that whole zone that whole time when you're delivering. But the only problem is where is the orders in these towns from people who live here? I keep delivering outside of my own area to other towns. Does not anyone eat in their own town? Or what are they, you know, I think DoorDash is screwing with us big time, folks. You know what I mean? They're. I think what they're doing is pulling us out of our own town so we don't become comfortable, you know, trying to get us to, because uh, Hannibal said one time, they're always trying to push you further. They're always trying to give you stuff so, you know, and make you desperate so you'll take, you know, $8 for six miles, which is terrible, folks. That's like a dollar ten, a dollar twenty per mile. I mean, and, and actually, it's not even that because when you do all the math, what are you really making at the end? And now with all the gas prices the way they are, but the whole point of it is, I think what they're doing is sending us out of our own towns in our own areas, miles away, and then bringing in people from miles away into our towns, like totally crisscrossing everything. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I mean, are you starting to understand that? And please let me know. In this video, comment in the section how it is in your area. What's going on in your area? Do you live in a major city? Do you live in a suburb? Do you drive to a major city? See, I could drive 30 minutes or 40 minutes from where I live and go into a major city. But I don't want to do it because the reason... And you might say, well, that's your fault. Well, the traffic is gridlock most of these times and you may get 25 30 dollar orders but you're, it's taking you an hour or an hour and 15 20 minutes to deliver that sometimes i know that sounds strange but some of you if you're in a certain area where you where i'm talking about you know what i mean by the traffic gets gridlocked even at dinner time are you kidding me try to get around in a major city like that it's insane you need to be spread out a little bit you need to have some breathing room but it just sucks too because these customers, look, we all know DoorDash is stealing, and we know Uber is stealing. We know Lyft is stealing. We know all of these app companies steal from the cust from the uh, drivers. We know this. We've seen it. Why are this class action suits against these companies, right? Especially DoorDash. And Tony Shu, you piece of shit. If you ever listen to this video, you, I mean, you're a disgrace to to. The, the whole community of drivers, I mean, you're, you, you are. And so isn't Dara Kashashawi from, from Uber. He's, they, these, these people, they, you think they care about us? They're making four or five hundred million dollars a year. And by the way, folks, they have been brought in on purpose to screw you, okay? You might be laughing, what? Get out of here. That's not true. Yeah, that's what they've been done. That's what has been done, folks. They've come in. Through the guise of trying to, you know, ooh, do a better community and make money for people and this and that. It's all part of Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030. And I gave you links, guys, into one of the other videos that I did. And I told you about what Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 is. You need to watch those to understand. I mean, watch that video to understand uh, how and why and all this stuff is really happening. See, people don't have answers but that video will give you the answer it will it automatically will give you the answer you need to watch the video and i'm sorry i'm ranting here folks but it's been a crappy lunchtime and so like when i went in to try to re re uh do the the dash it wouldn't even let me do it so i'm i'm coming on it i'm supposed to come on at four o'clock to midnight but i never work till midnight i just do that to extend it out in case i ever have to because where i live a lot of these stores and everything all close around 10 o'clock and 11 for sure so the reason they want you on till 12 o'clock sometimes is because just in case they want to pull you into a completely different area 10 15 miles away and then usually, you know how they give you these borders of like you get outside your zone. When it gets later and there's less drivers, they'll let you drive anywhere. But the problem is you you be driving to kingdom come. You know, it, it, it ends up being like you're driving for Uber because they're sending you like these crazy pickup spots. So none of us are, are smart people that know now are not taking these long orders. And so a lot of these orders are definitely sitting longer in these uh, restaurants and the people are getting cold, cold food. But guess what? Guess whose fault it is? 
It's the customer's fault and it's DoorDash's fault because we've given the customer too much leeway and too much and DoorDash is, and then, you know, behind the scenes, they're charging them outrageous, you know, $11, $12 del delivery charges, but we're not getting any part of that delivery fee, folks. They're taking that and they're giving us chump change. They're giving us $2 off an $11, $12 delivery fee. That's like they're taking 80 and 90 percent of, of the fees, folks, which should be given to the drivers, not them. They're not doing any of the work. We're doing all the work. Man, we got to sue these companies, folks. I'm sorry, but that's what we got to do. We got to sue them back in court. We need to we need to get someone as a leader to form a huge lawsuit i mean the biggest lawsuit that any of these companies have ever had and just and all donate 10 or 20 dollars into it into a gofundme page and then just continually take them to court just so we can burn their pockets out see how they like it losing money how do you like that one folks anyways i'm done ranting folks Thanks for wa uh, listening and watching the channel here. Please hit the subscription button, the notification bell, and the like button. And by the way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna twist anything. I'm gonna make I'm gonna tell you just how it is. I mean I I mean I'm pissed, aren't you? Do you like not making any money, folks? They're screwing us. These companies are screwing us. And everyone ha everyone will have a different opinion. But hopefully, you're right on board with me on it. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.